Hi, my name is Jeff Huard. I'm founder and CTO of Perspica, a startup that focuses on AI ops, specifically around automating anomaly detection, event correlation, and root cause analysis. Perspica was acquired a couple of years ago by Cisco and is the core technology that is at the heart of the AppDynamics cognition engine. Today, we'll talk about how to achieve rapid diagnostic with a new AI powered root cause analysis capability. Before we jump into the presentation, I'd like to quickly remind you of our safe harbor statement, which just means that we're sharing confidential information and we are not making any guarantees in here in terms of specific product features, looking, you know, the exact look and feel and delivery of timelines. With our le legal reminder out of the way, let's jump into and look at what those new apps features look like. AIOPS is the next generation of IT monitoring solution that brings automation, performance, and service manager under one holistic approach. In a way, it's, it's AI specialized for IT ops to enable automated autonomous systems that have the ability to separate the signal from the noise. The, the system will have the ability to self-manage, auto-configure, and auto-heal. If we're able to have today self-driving cars, we should definitely be able to have self-managing data center. As AI apps has become more mainstream, the highest priority use case that we hear from our users are around intelligent alerts and event, root and event correlation root cause analysis in the 60-67%, followed closely by optimization, predictive, and auto-remediation in the lower 50% of our customers. AI apps requires a change in mindsets that brings automation to the forefront. The AI apps transformation is no longer optional. It's a necessity. At Dynamics started this journey with application monitoring several years ago, and then it added infrastructure and network and soon security data from Cisco. We call this the visibility pillar of a central nervous system vision. The central nervous system in a way is very similar to the function of the human nervous system. The platform takes the data from various data source, providing visibility. Then the AI and ML engine, our cognition engine, interprets that data providing its insights. And finally, once we have those insights, the action, the action pillar allows us to trigger automated actions to either remediate, orchestrate, or handle the current situation. Let's take a closer look at the technology stack or what an architecture for an AIOps platform would look like. Our technology stack is comprised of different APIs all around here. Some of those are the API on the left-hand side that's for service enablement, instrumentation, deployment, configuration, and administration of the product. The one at the bottom layer around data ingestions, and really it's the ability to extend the data model and ingest different types of data that are necessary for the analysis. The top part are around unified visualization and provides essentially the ability to query and slice and dice the data so that we can provide relevant visualization across domain in one place. And the one on the, the left hand, on the right hand side, sorry, so are, are around alerting and automation. Today, we'll focus on some of the AI and ML capability, which is the heart of the cognition engine. Those resides right here in the middle layer. It's very similar to what the human brain does naturally. Right? It correlates data cross-domain data, it filters out the noise, keeping only the essential information needed for triggering actions. Within this layer of AI and ML, several algorithms are running concurrently to provide answers to critical questions such as, what's the root cause of performance issue and its business impact? Among all the suspected root cause, what's the top priority to investigate? Initially, to meet customer demand, the focus has been on reducing mean time to repair and triggering automated action. Today, the capability of this layer addresses the top two use cases discussed earlier, namely the intelligent alerts and event correlation root cause analysis. This is done by us focusing on pattern detection, anomaly detection, and causality of this layer. Additional capabilities are either part of our roadmap already in there, but are not the focus of this presentation today. With regards to problem management, when an issue occurs, this UI provides user a holistic view of the current situation. So we're talking about bringing here relevant data in terms of providing 
unified visibility around a problem, all the relevant things so that we can provide visibility in the business and the impact uh, to the business, whether it's a, it's a reduction in business revenue or revenue at risk or a drop in the <coughs> sign-up process. Providing also alongside the user experience in terms of responsiveness of the application or whether you know, the application is experiencing errors. And finally, all the relevant and correlated contexts, that is the impact to the current situation, the relevant ev events, and alert and suspected root cause. For example, if you take those events here at the bottom, the, the small circle in blue, if some of those events are about the fact that a service was rebooted or upgraded a few minutes prior to actually the performance degradation starting, it provides us very good insight into where can the problem lies. So this is where you know bringing all the relevant cross-domain data is very powerful. Now let's take a look at a very specific um, capability around automated root cause analysis. When there's a problem, automated root cause analysis will detect anomalies in matter uh, in matter of seconds or real in real time and at scale. The cognition engine requires zero manual configuration, and it will baseline all the metrics that are associated to that application. First, it detects the anomalies when a business transaction's performance starts degrading. Then it correlates those anomalies and events to identify the most suspicious cause. And finally, it isolates the problematic resource, whether those are uh, deviating metrics, um, calls to a database, errors per minute, responsiveness. The first step of really isolating those resources is to ident identify the faulty domain. The faulty domain could be um, a third-party application, third-party service that you're using, a remote service, could be the network, could be the database, it could be the application itself. And when it's within the application, then we can actually drill down using additional capabilities. Let's take a look at a demo just to make this very, very clear. So let's take a look at this demo of the Cognition Engine. First, I've already taken the liberty to actually log in the product. Here, what you see is the uh, dynamic homepage overview. And we see that we have multiple applications that are being monitored. Today, we'll look at the AD Financial Next application. When I select this, what I see right away is uh, what we call the flow map. Uh, this is on our dashboard. This is the relationship between all the nodes or, or all the tiers. And it's made of, you know, it's, it's, it's built using all of the business transactions that they were discovered, who's talking to and so on. Uh, but I've already, you know, looked into, you know, the timeline and there was an anomaly uh, that was detected um, a couple of days ago. And let's, take, let's go and take a look at this anomaly. So what we have here, um, what we see actually is, is that flow map is that the reward service is actually having some, some problem and it's in red. We can also notice um, a few things. We can notice that there's a spike in errors that have happened, um, you know, maybe around 5.55 in the morning. And we also notice that the response time around 5.59, 6 o'clock started increasing. So there, you know, there's some kind of problems that got triggered in there. Um, we can search for those specific events by going to the event tab, um, for instance, going there and then um, looking at, uh, you know, at events only. We can unselect all type of events and look for anomalies. And uh, as I look at those, what I can see is that there's an anomaly that got started uh, that's critical, actually, for the business transaction search rewards. And uh, what I'll do there is I'll just simply click on it. And as I click... What the Cognition Engine did is basically analyze the situation um, at this time, at 5.59, for that API or business transaction. And what it has elevated is actually all of the component of, of that application that are actually potential uh, candidate you know, for, to create that slowness. And what it did on the left-hand side is actually um, it stack rank what it believes are possibly the, the main root cause for that problem. So as we, as we drill down there, in fact, before drilling down, let me just show you an additional thing. So, 
So we have actually also possibly actions that will be executed and transaction snapshots that will be also collected when we have those problems. We also see a timeline here illustrating when the problem started and if it ended and so on. As I drill down into a possible cause here in the reward service, what I see right away is what are the metrics, um, what is the baseline, what, is, what was expected for that, for that metric. And we see that typically the expected range is somewhere between um, 0 and 900 milliseconds, so between 0 and 1 second. And, uh, and the average response time typically during, you know, during that period is around 300 milliseconds. So it's, it's, fairly, it's a fairly quick API call. <clears throat> What's been happening is suddenly it started being much slower, and now we're having a response time in the few thousand, which is completely out of the typical baseline for that metric. Um, so, so the anomaly was detected, and then we started looking into underneath what is actually possibly causing this. Why is this reward service or you know slower? And what it identifies is that the CPU busy metric also started um, being extremely elevated compared to its normal uh, behavior at that same time. We'll get into you know the, the actual cause of why is that metric uh, elevated in a moment. Let me show you a few additional capabilities first. So I talk about that timeline here where you can see that we detect problem early uh, and then when it gets resolved you know we, we, we actually see this uh, the, it's completed. When I, I, I can look also at at that timeline through the event console. I can see that the events you know, was started and then it went to critical and then it ended. So those are actually different events that can be used to trigger different things. So let me, let me show you actually some of the stuff that happened. So here what we see is in that timelines, you know, what, what happened is after the problem started, an email was sent um, to our guy who's building our demo, to Wayne Brown. And, and then later on, um, you know, there was also a, an HTTP uh, web hook that was invoked um, to post some information on the Slack channel for where DevOps people are watching this. And an, a remediation script was started automatically to uh, on, on Web API node 1 to actually fix this. And we can see that within a minute or two, the problem was resolved and everything was ended you know, at that time. So, so there are different ways of looking at the timeline. So going back to, you know, to our, de our original demo, what we see here is that the cognition engine actually simplified that flow map by, by just showing you the relevant components that are uh, that are involved in the problem. It's also stack ranking what it believes are you know is the root cause. And when there are multiple nodes, <coughs> it will use those to actually um, tell you specifically is it one node or is it multiple node of a clusters that are 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 broken. And it also um, brings you all the relevant uh, transaction snapshots. And this is where you know with the this is where you can actually easily then identify uh, what is the next um, what is the line of code specifically because it's about this tier that's causing that problem. So you can actually double click on this and then it brings automatically to the snapshot um, analyzer and you can actually drill down from there and identify the line of code. In the future, uh, one of the capability we're working on is automating actually that analysis for you so that uh, it's going to be linked. So the moment it actually finds that it's a problem with that node, it will tell you specifically the line of code where the problem is. How do you get started with this? Well, it's fairly straightforward. You actually go inside the alert and respond of the product where you can read some information about how this is working. Anomaly detection works very similar to health rule. The difference is that it's fully automated versus health rules have manual configuration steps. Um, to identify, to identify, uh, to, sorry, to enable actually the anomaly detection, you only need to go in anomaly detection for a specific application, and then you turn it on here. And after you turn it on, the model will start training, and within 48 hours, those models should be ready. And you'll see this, for example, by having you know a ready in the status that's telling you that that model is complete. Then if it's not available, then it would tell you reasons why model might not be available. Maybe there's not enough data so they cannot be trained, or it's still in training until it, it, it receives enough data. So it's fairly straightforward. It will also show you all the anomalies at the time frame that you selected that have been there, which is the one that we were looking at a little bit earlier. In a nutshell, you know, anomaly detection uh, is, is um, 
is leveraging a lot of capabilities of our product. But the, what it's really delivering is is a faster mean time to repair. The cognition engine reduces the number of false alarm by basically correlating multiple things together. It also consolidates those events into a single anomaly, and then it reduced, which reduced the number of overall events. Um, it uses the auto discovery capability of the product to have a complete view of all the components of the application that were discovered. And that, you know, that avoids uh, or <coughs> that helps you um, having a, a constantly accurate uh, flow map that is actually illustrated. So, so you're not trying to troubleshoot a problem by, by, by using a flow map that is outdated by a few hours. Um, it's, it leverages the concept of business transaction that I was mentioning as a gate opener. If a business transaction is slow, it means there's some problem and it's, it's time to look into it. Then, it. then it leverages the snapshot capabilities to, specific, to identify the specific line of code. So, you know, with, this, with that being said, let's get back to um, the remainder of the presentation and I'll talk about how we do the actions. Now that we've identified root cause, the next step is to actually trigger an action using the contextual information. So the engine is able to trigger a corrective actions, whether that be executing a script on a server, opening a Slack channel or WebEx channel for a war room, as examples. One of the main benefits is a reduction in war room frequency, duration, and necessary staff and resource. By, by being able to identify very rapidly whether the problem was in the network, the database, a third-party application, or the application itself, by identifying the right domain, you can, you can eliminate the finger pointing and bring the right people to work together and foster a much more collaborative work environment. Those APIs on this side will allow you to trigger actions. In order to start and accelerate the process of triggering actions, <coughs> we started a, an integration partnership program, which allows us to ingest data from third party, but also several integrations that have been developed for us to actually trigger actions. Those could be um, products such as, you know, Ops Genie, PagerDuty, that allows to, in, you know, route tickets or issues to end users to come and fix them, or products like BigPanda and MOOCSoft that allows to do um, root cause analysis with other events from third-party system and so on. In order, you know, two of our initial uh, Cisco product integration were ACI and C1. With our ACI integration, network and application teams have faster path to remediation and can finally understand how network policies impact application performance. On the right-hand side, with our CWAM integration, when a performance issue is caused by a lack of infrastructure resource, CWAM will automatically remediate infrastructure constraints. We've been even going a bit further with this with our InterSites offering, where we combine ACI and CWAM so that with the Hyperflex infrastructure, if we detect a problem within the application, we can allocate more resource within the virtual infrastructure. So these are examples of combining use case, how AI apps can be very powerful. At the AI apps will enable the transformation of your operation from being reactive to becoming proactive. And some of the key benefits today that we've discussed are around reduction of mean time to repair, reduction in number of incident tickets, as well as automation of tedious tasks. These benefits align well with AI ops and with, our, with the technology that we are developing. The platform allows for greater productivity and enable teams to work on much more strategic initiative, adding value to the bottom line of the business. A, at the AI ops will help you solve, solve some of your toughest challenges. Before we complete this, this uh, webinar, let's remind us of some of the takeaways. AOPS, it's no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. It has become humanly impossible to, impossible to manage all of that data and understand the complexity of those applications that are com constantly dynamic. Automated root cause analysis is the key enabler to close the feedback loop. Without accurate root cause analysis, nobody will be willing to just let go and let the data center be fully automated. 
And AppV at Cisco have a rich data set and expertise, which allows us to deliver on those promises. As a next step, I invite you to watch Reduce MTTR in production with deep code level visibility breakout session. This is an approach where you can actually troubleshoot your code in production. Or discover more product information and request a demo or sign up for a beta program at appdynamics.com slash transform now. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and I look forward to conversation in the near future with you. Thank you.